Hey there, today we're talking about the Canon G9X Mark II and if it's still worth buying this camera in 2021. My name is... So I should start off by saying that there is a newer version of this camera out there. There is a Mark III that shoots 4K and it was not what I was looking for. I have always had a camera with me that I just kind of carry around to record my day-to-day -day basis. And because I do this YouTube channel now, I wanted to upgrade that camera so that it was a little better quality that I could possibly use in these videos. So I thought it was interesting to kind of talk about the camera and kind of why I decided to buy this camera right now. So for the longest time, the camera that I always carried with me was this Canon S120. This camera is beaten to death. It still works, but because the camera is so beat up and has been through sand, water, snow, this camera has been through everything. Like this camera is completely destroyed, so the image quality is just not working. The camera is struggling to properly record footage, and it looks very kind of... Unless it's in the right setting, this camera is really not working out the best. So I was looking at the different options to upgrade that camera and I came across the G9X. I did automatically thought about buying the newer version, but after watching a couple of comparisons, I found out that this version was a better version for me. What I was looking for in the camera was good HD. I'm not looking to shoot 4K for my day-to-day -day basis. I like to document my everyday. I didn't want to shoot in 4K. I didn't want to have crazy specs. For that, I have three, four different cameras at home that shoot 4K. I wanted a camera that I could carry with me that had great quality, but it wasn't gonna take over my hard drives with the amount of footage. So this camera came to mind. Uh, it was a camera that I've seen before. I think a lot of people that who did vlogs and things like that kinda bought this camera, so I was very impressed with the quality back then. Obviously, cameras have evolved and there's much better quality now, but I found that this camera was really great for documenting, vlogging type thing. This camera has incredible specs considering how old it is and kind of how small it is. There is great things that you can do with this camera and I really like how it's built. I've tried, I don't remember what camera I tried before. I tried replacing this camera before, but I found that the build quality is one of the first things that kind of don't allow me to change it. S120 has worked really well because it's really well built. This camera is destroyed, but I have literally carried this camera all over the world. Like the, the flash thing doesn't open anymore. Part of the screen missing here. I need a camera that can deal with the pressure. I need a camera that can sustain falling. And I need a camera that can live on the end of my backpack. I need a camera that can fall and still works. I need a camera that can take a beat. This is the camera that came to mind, especially because of the build and because of the good HD. That's the main factor is why I went for this camera. I'm not looking to shoot this on manual, I usually put this on auto, but I'll keep an eye on the settings and how it's changing. And I do like that you can change the kind of overall exposure by changing this, so you're not having to click through. If you don't like the settings that the camera kind of decided to do on auto, you can always use the ring to change the exposure yourself, which I do think is nice. There is a little bit of manual options here if you decide to do that. So, but I did kind of pick this camera for the automatic settings. Some of the things that I do like about this camera is the autofocus. It has a really nice, beautiful focus lens and it has a decent autofocus. Once it grabs onto your face, it holds on pretty well. This version, particularly the silver, this leather, I think is, I think this leather is really nice. I think it creates like a very beautiful camera. The S120 was just pure black and it was fine but I thought this looked really good. I haven't tried the photo capabilities on this, but it does shoot raw photos, which is also something that is quite nice if I ever decided to do so. Some of the things I wasn't too fan of the camera, I think this is a 24 to like 70, which is the average, but I think this one was a 16. I felt like this lens was a little wider than this one is. So I feel like whenever you're recording yourself, it feels slightly closed. It might be just because I'm not used to it. Again, I've used this camera for the past eight, year, eight years. 
seven, eight years. And I literally just got this camera a couple of days ago. So I'm just not used to the, the focal length, but it was something that I kind of called my attention straight out of the gate. I don't get why the, the playback button is on top. I feel like playback is not a big thing. It could just be on the side or it could have been here or something like that. Uh, a lot of the time I, I, I find myself hitting the playback, expecting the camera to turn on, but it doesn't. So it's... The things that I don't really like about the camera, it tends to be just because I'm not used to it. I did like the specs of the camera and I like the ergonomics of the camera. So it's obviously a camera that I'm going to get familiar with. But the, for me, the things that I maybe not as big fan of is just things that I haven't gone around to get used to. I feel like every camera is about how well you get with the camera and not really about the camera itself. There's Wi-Fi in here. I don't know who uses Wi-Fi on their camera, but I guess that could be a thing. SD card on the bottom and battery. I bought a spare battery, which is quite nice. It has a little tread thing, which is good. So this is just to fill in that gap where you don't want to bring a camera, but you want to bring a camera. And the idea is just always carrying this. I find it very important to kind of document my day-to-day -day basis, either when I'm working or with family, just as a way to look back and see those moments and kind of see what was happening at that time. I feel like life changes so fast. So having something like this, shooting things on my phone, things kind of get a little bit lost. And I just personally don't really like the image coming from phone. If I have to, by all means. But if I have the option to use a camera instead of a phone, I'll always do it. Uh, bigger sensor, better lens, it's meant for it. The, the camera on your phone is really great because of the technology behind it, not because it's a great camera. So if I can have this, I always will. And especially now creating these YouTube videos, I could create behind the scenes while I'm shooting or if I wanna shoot a couple clips at a park or anywhere I am, I can easily do that with a quality that I'll be happy to put on these videos by shooting on this camera. I do think it's still a great camera. A lot of the videos that I saw comparing this with the newer version had a lot of troubles with the autofocus. This camera obviously doesn't have a lens, not like you can focus this with your hand. So autofocus is everything on this camera. So having a camera that is not good at autofocus and you can't manual focus, is, is weird. I don't see why they, they would ever do that. So that's it. I just wanted to talk a little bit about why I decided to buy this camera now. Uh, it was the best option for me, but it might not be the best option for you. Make your own research and kind of compare what you're looking to create with the settings on the camera that you're deciding to purchase. Uh, but that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. And if you like this kind of videos, you want to see more, hit subscribe. We make videos here every Monday. Goodbye.